What is up guys? Welcome back to another Geek or What video and today is a really exciting one because I've got my hands on this. Uh, this contains some of the latest 11th generation Intel CPUs and that's really exciting. In this video we're going to build an awesome gaming PC for 2021 and beyond. I'm going to cover off all the parts including these new Intel CPUs and testing out whether you should buy these or simply, you know, stick with Ryzen. We're then going to test out how the whole machine performs in some of the most popular titles out there, for example Cyberpunk 2077, Fortnite, Apex Legends and a whole host more. So without any further ado, let's see if these Intel chips are worth the hype after a quick word from today's video sponsor. Today's video has been made possible by AlphaSync and their awesome lineup of gaming PCs which now come preloaded, pre-installed and ready to go with Xbox Game Pass for PC. What that means is you can pick up any of the systems from their extensive lineup including this 3090 PC and play some of your favourite titles right out of the box. Plus with new games added every single month there's always going to be a range of titles for you and your friends to enjoy on Xbox Game Pass for PC. Check out the videos I made with AlphaSync Gaming about Xbox Game Pass for PC and how it can help you in the card section now. And make sure to give our recent Game Pass setup video a watch through linked in the description below. A big thanks to them though for making today's video possible and make sure to check out the entire AlphaSync range now with Xbox Game Pass for PC. I'm going to come back to some of our other components a little bit later and actually focus this build for now on our CPU and motherboard choices. Now I've got a few different motherboards in so we can really compare the difference depending on how much you spend But first let's take a focus look at our CPUs today. This is a very exciting unboxing. Here we go Oh, oh bloody hell <laughs> That's cool, it says designed to game. That's quite funny. Uh, we'll be the true test of that a little bit later. But when Intel say that, their props not being as disingenuous as one might suspect. What they've actually done with these latest 11th gen chips, we've got the i9 and the i5, is reduced the core count. Yes, these chips have less cores. And that might sound a bit weird, but what that means is they've been able to push the clock speeds and the single threaded performance that bit further. And what that means is gaming performance in the vast majority of titles is going Going to be better over last generation. Combine this with rumours I'm hearing that these will indeed be in stock, I mean that is a huge bonus in 2021 and Intel could be onto a winner but as I say we'll be the judge of that a little bit later. Now unlike AMD CPUs if you want all the features and you want the fancy motherboard and you want the overclocking support which will allow us to push these chips even further you have to go for a more expensive motherboard. This used to be a major disadvantage but the new AMD B550 boards aren't the cheapest. So something like the Asus Tough Gaming Z590 is actually not a bad shout. Now you can kind of see where Asus makes some cost savings, the box is very plain, it's very simple, but the motherboard is a good looking thing. As you can see here, with plenty of heatsink cooling around our VRMs, a really solid rear I.O. that thankfully includes Wi-Fi, great for a board of this price, and it's Wi-Fi 6. Uh, you also get plenty of heatsink cooling for the actual chipset, your CPU socket, four RAM DIMM slots, and holy moly, the longest M.2 heatsink I have ever seen. Now that actually has support for two M.2 slots, uh, but it's still, it's quite a spectacle really, isn't it? There's only two SATA ports on this motherboard. If that isn't, you know, a representation of how far we've come, there's only two. And of course, support for Gen 4 SSDs, which we're going to be trying out a bit later, giving you those really, really quick NVMe drive speeds. So that's the cheapest of the motherboards. What about if we go up to the big daddy? We go up to the behemoth. We go up to the Asus Maximus 7, 8, 13. It's Maximus 13. <laughs> Look at this thing! My goodness me! That is bonkers! This thing has like heat sinks everywhere. I think this might be RGB. We've got a peel though, that's exciting. Uh, we've got plenty of VRM cooling. The biggest M.2 heat sink, that's big, but look at the size of this thing! And then of course another one down here. Wow, that is very nice from Asus. Look, I mean, look at the back of the board as well, compared to the back of this board. Look how much circuitry is actually on that board in comparison, especially kind of this region over here and up here. You can kind of see where those extra costs come in. For someone like Asus, and it's heavy as well on this really expensive board. Now, this is the board we're gonna pair with the i9, but I also have 
the Strix. Now the Strix is kind of a middle ground between the two. The packaging's a little bit nicer, but you know, not quite as premium. Uh, and you do get a bit more heat sink cooling on here as well. This is a really nice looking board actually. Uh, and all of these have Wi-Fi 6. This has Wi-Fi 6E versus standard 6, which does make a bit of a difference. But but yeah, I mean, that's a pretty impressive show of motherboards from Asus. And with that, we're gonna finally go ahead and actually install our i9 11900K uh, into the motherboard today. I will, of course, link all of the components for latest pricing and availability down in the description below. And hopefully these Intel chips should be a little bit easier to get your hands on, especially compared to some of the new Ryzen 5000 stuff, which is nearly as bad as GPUs when it comes to stock if we're being really honest. We will come back to our CPU performance a little bit later, but first, let's go ahead and install the RAM, and then followed by our M.2 SSD storage for our build today. In terms of memory, I think you definitely want 32 gigabytes if you're looking for high performance, extreme gaming, extreme gaming, extreme gaming in 2021. That's because 16 gigabytes starts to become a bottleneck, especially on a 3080 or a, uh, you know, a Core i9, whether it be a 10th or 11th gen chip, same for Ryzen 9, uh, etc., etc. Uh, the four RAM DIMMs also gives us some nice dual channel performance uh, gains as well, which is always nice, really. Uh, and this Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro S Al kit is actually not too expensive, which... I mean, in this build seems a bit pointless, I admit, but there isn't really much point in spending, you know, 400 US dollars on some RAM if you don't need to spend 400 US dollars on some RAM. As exciting as the RAM is though, I think our M.2 storage today is even more exciting. This is the WD Black Gen 4 uh, SSD drive. With read and write speeds, can you see that? Up to seven gigabytes a second. Can you believe it? That is crazy. Uh, this one terabyte M.2 NVMe drive pushes storage to the max. This is an area that Intel definitely wins out over AMD at the moment in terms of widespread Gen 4 NVMe uh, support, and Z590 takes that even further. Seven gigabytes a second. We'll test that later as well, but seven gigabytes a second, that's, that's just ridiculous. Whoa, the size of this thing. Look at that, that is ridiculous. That's definitely gonna keep uh, this WD Black drive nice and cool. Of course, maybe Gen 4 drives do get a little bit hotter, than the older Gen 3 counterparts, but that's because they're dealing with so much speed. Ha <laughs> ha That feels pretty secure to me, and I'm just gonna pop the other one back on. Oh God, it's sticky. It's sticky, sticky, sticky. Something tells me that is on and secure. And with that, our motherboard assembly, as you're gonna call it, is complete. We've done the CPU, the RAM, and the motherboard, which means it's time to go ahead and move it into the case choice today. And this is it. This is Corsair's 5000D Airflow, and it's one of their highest end cases on the market right now. I've done a couple of builds with this case, it's fair to say, and I'm a pretty big fan. At the rear of the chassis, you get a great deal of cable management room as well. And although this one doesn't have the glass rear panel, it does make it easy to hide your cables away. It just keeps the build process super simple, and that's one thing Corsair do really, really well. You can also see there's a radiator mount here. So we're gonna take off the protective front cable shield to free up our radiator mount and actually put a 360 mil rad in this case, which is gonna look awesome. Our motherboard is in and we've just done a bit of prep to actually be able to use the 360 mil kind of horizontal radiator mount. And for that, I've picked up this. This is the Cooler Master ML360R, one of my favorite 360 mil coolers that I've tried in quite a long time actually. Uh, I've actually had a couple of these and this is just a brand new one I picked up uh, for this build today. And having a 360 mil cooler is gonna help with this Core i9. It is a really powerful CPU, much like a Ryzen 9. It will run hotter, a lot hotter, uh, than something like an i5 uh, or a Ryzen 5. So this is gonna be a perfect choice. Plus we can mount the radiator here, get some nice fans, get some nice aesthetics going, and it should look awesome uh, with the build today. You can kind of see this is a bit of a monster. You've got the 360 mil radiator here, which is compared to my head, which is also big, this is massive. So let's go ahead, mount the radiator, and I'll screw the fans on, and then we're nearly ready to uh, water cool our CPU. Exciting stuff. 
I always find installing the CPU cooler is like the most complicated bit. The radiator's in, so that's all good. Uh, and we've put the CPU cooler back plate through the motherboard, so we're all good there. We just need to pop these little kind of tube things uh, onto the back plate screws that are now sticking out of the motherboard. And then fasten the actual water block of the cooler onto the CPU itself. Simples, right? <laughs> That is looking pretty naughty, I think. And that brings us nicely on to the next component today, our graphics card. This is the Asus TUF RTX 3080. We've also got a Strix 3080 in at the minute, although that one is like stupidly expensive and the TUF card is just the much better value option. It's also kind of like a gunmetal gray, black color, which fits in with the stealth aesthetic of our build today. And it's a perfect pairing actually for the i9. This case does have a vertical GPU you mount so you could technically mount the gpu here but because of airflow and stuff like that i think it makes more sense to just put it in the normal orientation and it does give us then a bit more room for expansion drives and that kind of thing you ready here we go here we go here we go come on oh beautiful let's screw it down and then i think all we need to do with our build today is actually plug up uh, some power connectors and all of that jazz and with the graphics card in there's only one component left to install and that is the power supply we need to make sure our build has got plenty of clean safe power to actually get all the components booted up and ready to go and this is a power supply from msi with 850 watts of gold rated power gold you heard me right this thing is mega efficient and it's got a fully modular interface specifically it's called the mpg 850 a850GF. Nice. Uh, the modular cable bag is also um, it's a bit chonky. You get loads of modular cables, so you really can plug in basically as many drives, as many graphics cards, and as many devices as 850 watts will allow in your system. If you'd like to see kind of a detailed cabling and wiring guide, make sure to get subscribed for that and turn notifications on as well. That's the important bit. Uh, but we're just going to go ahead and plug up the graphics card followed by the motherboard. There we go. And then our CPU power at the top as well. And with that, our, oh, bloody hell. Look what's just happened. Bloody Nora. On that note though, our system is pretty much done. I know that's very exciting. We do need to do a little bit of cable management. Um, and then we're gonna boot our system up, see how it performs and test out the performance of not only our Intel 11th gen Core i9 CPU, but also this 3080 and of course that WD Black NVMe Gen 4 SSD. Before we do that though, let's see just how good this system looks uh, when it's all powered up, of course, with the RGB, with the fans, and there's only one way to do it. See you in a sec, but roll the montage. <laughs> Awesome stuff. So we've finished putting this system together and we've seen just how good it looks when it's all powered up. But let's now take a dive into the land of performance. On your screen now, first up is a kind of a summary, a snapshot view of all the gaming titles we tested on this system, as well as some temperature numbers. I'm going to take a deeper dive into some of the gaming titles in just a second. But first, let's take a look at some of our general system and CPU benchmarks to see whether the 11900K is worth your cash. It's very tempting to compare the 11900K to the Ryzen 9 5900X, as they're both the i9 or tier 9 level chips, but it would be a mistake to do so. The Ryzen 9 actually has a $200 give or take price premium at RRP, and I'd say this i9 chip is firmly in the land of gaming when compared to the Ryzen 9 CPU. Productivity tasks though are still uh, very good, as you can see from the CPU Z results on screen now, but if you're after the multi-threaded king, I think AMD still definitely take that crown. Let's take a dive though, as I say, into some of our gaming benchmarks a little bit closer, starting things off with GTA 5. Here at 4K high settings, we got 142 FPS on average, with 133 and 117 for the 90 and 99th percentile results. 
This was tested in the game's inbuilt benchmarking mode to give us some really easy, repeatable results. And GTA 5, despite its age, is still a very demanding gaming benchmark test, and one you can easily compare with your own system. Next up today then is Call of Duty's Black Ops Cold War, specifically the Zombies mode. At 1440p high settings, we saw around 122 FPS on average, with 109 and 101 for the average and the 99th percentile results. This is only a little bit lower than the 60 6900 XT we tested out a while ago. Full video in the card section now, which is very impressive from a 3080 that's definitely punching above its weight. Next up today then is Apex Legends, tested first at 1440p high settings, and here we got 228 frames per second, with 204 and 183. Tested at a low resolution on a system like this, say at 1440 rather than 4K, is a great CPU test, as at lower resolutions the CPU becomes the limiting factor. Next up is Valorant, once again we tested at a low resolution to see what kind of numbers we were able to get. 357 FPS on average is not a bad result for an RTX 3080, and I personally thought the game looked great. That brings us nicely on to Cyberpunk 2077, which you can see playing out behind me on this system. Here at 4K RTX enabled medium settings with DLSS also turned on, we got nearly 70 frames per second, which is actually a very, very good result. This is around 18 more FPS than an identical setup with a Ryzen 5 5600X. Of course, the 5600X is a much more affordable CPU, but it just goes to show that Intel haven't quite reneged on all of their gaming accolades just yet. But what if you're not a cyberpunk fan and you want to play Fortnite instead? Still one of the most popular titles in my gaming benchmark roster. Well, you'll be happy to know that at 1440p high settings first up, we got 152 FPS on average with 137 and 121 for the 90 and 99th percentile results, while tuning down to 1080p competitive settings gave us 201 FPS. Yes, believe it or not, a two, three, maybe three and a half thousand dollar system with an i9 and a 3080 Cameron Fortnite. And on that bombshell, that about wraps it up for today's video. If you did enjoy it, you know what to do. Give it a big old like rating, make sure to get subscribed. Thank you very much for watching though, and as always, we'll see you in the next one.